Hey guys, what's up? Spencer here. Previously, I went over the theory for ridge regression. I'll make sure I link that down in the description. But in this video, I'll be doing an applied ridge regression in R. So, let's get down right to it. As always, we want to make sure that we clear our workspace. So let me actually run that real quick. Let's run that. And then once we clear all of our workspace so that we don't have conflicting variables from different data sets, our data that we'll be using today for ridge regression is coming from a site, uh, cs.toronto.edu. We're going to be using the Boston data set, a very popular and public data set that is meant to be used by potential machine learning algorithms and see how they fare. So I actually have it up on my other screen over here. So this is what the data looks like. We're we'll going to be working with uh, 506 observations. These are all of our features that we'll be uh, working with. In particular, this median value of owner-occupied houses and thousands of dollars uh, will be our response variable and all of our other variables will be our independent variables. I'll make sure to be linking this in the description as well as the link to the GitHub. Uh, but the data can actually be referenced here if you click on that uh, observation and voila, all of our data is here and separated by a new line. Um, but yeah, but we are going to get right down to it. So I went to the liberty, liberty of reading in my data over here. We have it there. Let's do some checks to see what type of observations that we're working with. So as always, we'll be using the str function and the summary function. Let's do that. So it looks like all of our observations are an integer or a numeric, which is fine. Let's do a summary to see if we have any NAs involved. Oh, I do see an NA over here. Um, so we're going to do some pre-cleaning uh, on our overall data and we'll be using the na.omit function where we essentially just remove the rows that have an na. Uh, there are other ways to avoid just removing the rows flat outright and we can do that via interpolation but in this particular video we won't be doing that. We'll just be removing them straight up. So we just do this data na omit. Let's do another summary on what that data looks like and it is out of there. And also, we, um, we have a different number of observations as well. We had 506 and it decreased to 452, which adds up if you do 54 plus 452, you get 506. So we are in good hands right there. After we cleaned all of our data uh, in terms of removing all the NAs, we want to make sure we actually scale our data uh, so that all of our since okay so we want to scale all of our data because many of our features have wide varying magnitudes of like di in terms of distance on a grid there's huge huge uh, differences between each features and we just want to scale those down because many of our machine learning algorithms run on, U on a Euclidean distance and so if we have shorter distances within each of these features we're gonna have a slower runtime and also, since we have it scaled, we can always scale back up to have interpretability and if we want to do ex ex additional exploratory analysis. So let's call this data scaled. And we want to scale the data. Uh, in this case, I just want to scale all of my X variables or all of our independent variables. So there's going to be 13 variables all in all and using um, just the med, uh, the median value. We can get that separate. We don't. We're not going to scale those, uh, but we're going to scale everything else. So since our y variable is at the very end, we're just going to reference all 13 of our other variables here, and then we're just going to do like a quick C bind. We're just going to combine by columns to have our data connected. So we're just going to reference that. So all of our data, 13, and that should be good. Scaled. There is something missing here. Uh, um, scale. There we go. So I fixed that. And let's take a look at that. Data underscore scaled. And now all of our data is scaled in terms of that. 
The idea behind scaling is actually really quite simple. You just get your observation, you subtract from the column mean, and then you divide the subtraction by the standard deviation of that column. That's all there is to it. So anyways, after we clean all of our data and everything is scaled to its respective proportions, uh, we are going to then separate our data set into an 80-20 training set. The 80-20 training sets, 80-20, 80-20, and we'll do this by uh, randomly selecting the indices. And so since I want you guys to follow along, I'm going to be setting a seed, uh, set.seed function, one, two, three. Make sure you have the same uh, seed value. The only reason why we want to do this is so that we can have a reproducible uh, script so that other people that are following along will have the same exact values that I have that I'm currently working with. So once I set my seed value, we want to essentially get the size of the 8%, of, so 80% of the indices. We will be using the floor function and then we will get 80% of our values. Multiply that by the number of rows that we currently have, and we will have 361. So let's do a really quick math, 452 times 0.8, we get 361, and then if we floor that value, we should get 361. So that is how you get 80% of all of our values rounded up. So once we have our size value, let us separate this into the training and um, the testing indices. So let's get the training indices. Uh, this would just be, uh, we essentially just get the sample where we get, we randomize 361 indices from a value of one to 452. And that's where the seed comes into play. So let's get the sequential of the length. It's a built-in function, very great. It just generates a regular sequence. Let's get the number of rows, which is data scale. And then this entire thing should just be a sequence or like an array, if you want to think in terms of that, of all of our existing values from one to 452. So it'll just be randomizing all, no, we'll be picking all of these values and the number of randomized picks that we will get is going to be the size that we have up here, which is 361. So train indices, so let's take a look at that. Train indices. And as you can see, everything here is a randomized pick value. Notice that every single value here is not a duplicate. So we don't have to worry about that. Replacement is equal to false. So once we have our train indices, we will then start separating it out into our training and testing set. So once we have our train, we get our data scaled data scaled and then we would just want to get our train indices and call up all the columns and once we have that let's look at string on train right so that's just the rows and that's just the columns but over here we have our train everything is a numerical uh, value uh, in terms of the matrix you want to think about it like that but as you can see on the left hand side, these values are the indice value and we have the corresponding row in that indice associated with the training sets that we would be producing. So let's do this. Let's call all of our X values um, over here and let's call all the rows and the first 13 columns. And then the Y train would just be the uh, train value at the 14th indice. Yeah, let's take a look at that, the Y train. These are all the values. Um, so at the very top, we should have 20.2. Very top, 20.2. So that's good there. That's a quick check. Then we want to create uh, the values that were not chosen. Uh, not chosen. And these will be our test values. So we have test data scaled, scaled, and then scaled, and then we just get the negation of the train indice. Train indice, comma, run that, 
And so our test is created up here. And then let's get the separate values, the training and the testing for the test. So you have x test, test, 1 to 13. And we have y test, test, just 14. Sweet. Now we have our training and our testing. In this video, we went over how to create our training and testing set. In the next video, we're going to go over more on how to use this specific piece of data in order to evaluate our ridge regression model. So I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.